Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Traffic Corner Tuesday. My name is Nancy Crow. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for SPAC Consulting and I'll be your host for today's session. Before we begin, I just want to remind people of a couple housekeeping rules. Uh, please mute your mics so we don't catch any of the background noise in your office and allow some clear um, communication from our presenters today. And also join the conversation. Please take a moment and type in your questions throughout the presentation. Both of our guest presenta uh, presenters today will be answering questions throughout the webinar. I want to let everyone know that today's session is brought to you by SPAC Consulting, which is part of the SPAC Enterprise family of businesses. As many of you know, uh, SPAC Enterprise has a wide variety of businesses that serve the traffic engineering industry, including Mike on Traffic, which is our uh, traffic engineering blog, Counting Cars, our online store for tra selling traffic data collection products, SPAC Consulting, which is a traffic engineering consulting firm, servicing the entire um, North American continent. SPAC Academy, our online store for digital tools for transportation professionals. Traffic Data Inc., our traffic data collection firm in the Midwest. And finally, TripGeneration.org, which is the center of today's topic on trip generation data. Just a quick note that in July we are taking uh, one of our sessions off for the summer but we will be returning on July 25th with a topic around autonomous vehicles. We hope you can join us then. Look forward to seeing some messages come out over the next couple of weeks with that information. Finally, as a thank you for attending today's presentation, you'll be receiving information at the end of the session on how you can also download a free copy of our trip generation spreadsheet. This spreadsheet includes uh, over 10,000 hours of trip generation data that we've collected. It's free, open source data that we encourage people to download and use for their own use. Finally, I'd like to introduce today's presenters. Bryant Fiesek is a regular presenter on uh, Traffic Corner Tuesday. He is the Vice President of SPAC Consulting and is widely known in the transportation industry, having managed over 700 traffic engineering projects. Bryant is a graduate of the University of Minnesota and is an expert in Synchro, SIM Traffic, Vistro, and vSIM Traffic Modeling Software Packages, and he thrives on developing creative solutions to traffic and transportation issues. He is a regular contributor on the Mike on Traffic blog and a published author in industry publications as well as co-author of several industry manuals. Please welcome Bryant Fiesek. Also joining Brian today is Max Moreland. He is a longtime traffic engineer with SPAC Consulting. He is also a graduate of the University of Minnesota and specializes in traffic impact studies as well as leads the traffic data collection for our sister company, Traffic Data Inc. Max is actively involved in managing the data for tripgeneration.org. That's their website for data collection. And he is the current uh, director of the ITE North Central. Oh, I take that back. He's given me the, the hands off that he is the past, excuse me, he is the past director of the ITE North Central branch. He is also the co-author of the Traffic Counting Manual, which you can find on SPAC Academy, and he is a regular contributor on the Mike on Traffic blog. Please join Max Moreland, our presenters for today. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, before we uh, dive into it, I'm just going to do a very public uh, congratulations to Max. He is back off his vacation, recently getting married here. So uh, I'm sure you're all giving a nice round of applause for, my, for Max. Oh, and, stop. Uh, it's yeah. too much. It's too much. <laughs> but we appreciate having him back. We're glad he uh, did not stay in Europe and came back. And is, it was is a tough choice, working. but I'm here. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so start out here, picture of our trip generation manual. This is from IT. This is standard guide uh, used across the nation. This is the go-to document that everybody uses when they're trying to figure out what developments, uh, what that development traffic will be, what they expect to see from that. So we use it too. Um, like we said, it's common, it's standard, 
Everybody knows it. Anybody, anybody in the industry knows this is what you typically start with. But we have some issues with it, and this is where we get to our what's wrong with it. Um, just a few quick things here, just regional differences, old data, and then the limited applicability of it. So if we kind of quickly step through those one at a time here. Yep, so one of the limitations Brian just mentioned is regional differences in the data. Um, the ITE is a national handbook, so there's data from all over the country in there. Um, let's keep going. Okay, and uh, data, obviously, it's a big country, so data can vary throughout. Uh, one example we have is that... Oh. <laughs> Let's do a quick audio check. If you could just type in a quick, if you can hear us, that would be great. Standard webinar procedure yeah, audio apparently. check. We got a lot of yeses. All right. We're good. All right. We're just going to keep going then. All right. So as I said, it's a big country, so there are a lot of variations across the country. One example we have is we collected... Uh, trip generation data at student housing in Minnesota. We also received some data from uh, student housing in Florida. And we were surprised to find that the trip generation for the Florida student housing um, for universities was about three or four times of what uh, we had in Minnesota. And comparing that against the ITE numbers, uh, that was kind of right in the middle. So uh, daily trips per unit in Minnesota were about three. It was closer to 13 in Florida, and it was closer to 6 for ITE. So it's a big variation. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so if we look at the next limitation, just old data. I got a picture of a uh, car lot here, basically car sales. You know, this, well, those are getting fewer. We're getting less drivers now. If you start looking at the curve of how much people drive, it's starting to go down, or at least it, that has been the trend recently. More people are willing to walk and, and bike. We're starting to encourage those other modes. So um, really, if you include data from 20 years ago, how applicable is that to today's environment? Are those characteristics the same? And uh, when we looked into it for what we could find for what the manual said, they still include some data from the 60s. So I mean, you're going back close to 60 years now, 50, yep. 60 years on that data. So is that is that really applicable? Should we really be including that in what we're doing? Um, and also there are just new land uses that come out. IT releases their uh, trip generation handbook every few years. I think there's a new one coming out later this year. Um, but there are a lot of new land uses we see, the, at least around in the Twin Cities area here. There's a, it seems like there's a new brewery every few weeks, so breweries and distilleries are popping up all over the place. Uh, marijuana dispensaries in some parts of the country, those are becoming more and more common, and those are relatively new. Um, urgent care facilities are popping up all over the place, which are a newer land use, and other examples uh, such as those. Mm -hmm. And that takes us right back to where it, uh, our main focus will be on today, which will be that fast casual uh, that uh, new land use and so let's start with the current IT data um, I don't know that my pictures are changing there but first you start with a, a quality restaurant uh, those are would typically be your your full service eating establishment uh, you've got a longer duration of stay they may not serve breakfast uh, they can be unique, so there's a lot of them that are not part of a chain. And then you've got the wait staff uh, that come, they serve you, and then typically you're paying after the meal too. You're sitting down, you're being served by that restaurant, and then they bring you the bill and you pay afterwards. So that's, that's the description for the quality restaurant from the IT manual. And a uh, high turnover sit-down restaurant is kind of maybe one step down from a quality restaurant. It's still a sit-down, full service. You know, there's a waiter that comes to your table. Um, oftentimes, these are part of a restaurant chain. You can find them all over the country. They usually serve lunch and dinner. Oftentimes, they will have breakfast, sometimes even 24 hours a day. Um, no reservations needed. Come, we oftentimes wait for a seat, serve to wait staff, use a menu, and you pay after you eat. And the final one we have on there is the fast food 
fast food restaurant and this is um, just like it sounds it's fast so people are typically going there because they know they're gonna they're gonna get in and out of there quickly there's a large carry out clientele most of them or a lot of them are open late into the night or 24 hours and it's a very high turnover some of them have limited space for actually sitting and, and um, they expect most people to stop in get their food and go and then you're also paying generally at a register up front you put your order and you pay for it and then it comes out quickly thereafter so those are the three categories currently in the manual on how they divide the restaurant field and if we turn specifically to the industry and what they're looking at they have several different classifications and they'll start out with what's the uh, what's the menu style um, behind the board up front what are they looking at there um, how is the how's the food prepared is it pre-assembled is it fresh some combination what's going on there if you have uh, the or the price point so there are different price points for different restaurants depending on what you're looking at and then the last one for the industry is kind of a service style like we talked a little bit about whether there's that wait staff or not uh, I'm going to jump in there was a quick question here on drive-through for fast food we're, we're lumping that into the same so uh, yes fast food will typically have the drive-through uh, we're not splitting that out in terms of what IT has it's it's fast food with or without the drive-through so hopefully that answers that question uh, so those are kind of the four different categories that the restaurant industry looks at when they're trying to define what or how to characterize those restaurants so some examples that we're listing there. Um, yeah, different kinds of restaurants that uh, the industry labels them as uh, fast food, fast casual, casual dining, family style, fine dining, ethnic restaurants. And then within those are different subcategories of, you know, from a barbecue to a buffet to a cafe to a pub. So it can be a wide variety within all these different classifications. Yeah, so we start out, we just talked about what IT has. They have three. We've listed close to 20 here based on those different variations. So that's from the industry standard. So what then we focus on is that fast casual, this new one, which came to us really, it's the people in Minnesota or the areas that we deal with, they're really trying to split that difference between the sit down and the fast food. They're, they're looking to try to get the best of both worlds. Make it fast, but also make it that sit down, better environment. And when we get involved, typically they're trying to avoid the fast food characterization just because uh, that's associated with higher traffic levels. So you say they're not gonna have that much and there might be different requirements from the cities if they're a fast food restaurant. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of the reason why they're trying to carve out this fast casual. So. As we looked at it and as we approached it, we are trying to think of, one, how do you define that? And then two, what does that mean in terms of traffic? Is there really a difference? So if we start with the first one, what's that fast casual definition? So this is as we started looking at it and thinking about it, let's go back to our four categories here with the, with the menu typically your fast casual is still going to be that order up and pay up front so first step is to is to do that on the on the menu pay up front not after the fact uh, the ingredients for fast casual are often freshly made they're not pre-made and sitting under a heat lamp they're usually uh, made to order mm -hmm. price point um, typically higher than a fast food and we saw some averages which may be Again, regional, you might see it in different areas of about five bucks per meal for fast food. Fast casual would have a higher price point, maybe closer to 10 bucks a meal. So it's it's definitely at a higher price point. Um, and the staff at a fast casual, there's no wait staff. You don't go to your table and have a, a waiter bring you a menu. You typically order at the counter, but they might have table runners where you place an order at the counter, you take a number and they'll come find you with your food. 
And then the last one we have is just kind of the ambiance of it. Um, fast food is typically generally plastic tables, plastic seats, easy to clean, easy to get through, and um, pretty generic um, surroundings, nothing, nothing fancy. Whereas a fast casual, there may be different things on the wall, music. There's different things to try to make it a more inviting experience, um, typically a larger dining room too that invites you to sit down. So as we're looking at it, we receive or we're, we're looking at these kind of five categories and trying to figure out what is a fast casual versus what is a uh, fast food. So I'm looking at some questions again here. Does the time to receive your food considered in the difference? I sort of. could be. Yeah. yeah. It had a, like a high turnover sit down, you might wait 10, 15 minutes at a slower place. You might wait 10 minutes for your food. Whereas at a fast casual, you're usually waiting under five minutes. So yeah. Sometimes it's immediate. And we should we should be upfront with this. I mean, this this is all stuff that we're coming up with as we're looking at it. There right. is going to be some slide between these two. As as we were trying to define the restaurants, this is what we started with. But man, a lot of times it was really uh, you know it when you see it. What yep. <laughs> what are we looking at? We try to put it into these categories, and they may only meet one of them. It may meet two of them, and it's kind of is that, is that enough? So if we go to into our examples of how we started to categorize it. So as we look at fast food, you know, obviously your McDonald's would be in there. Um, as we start to go down the list here, it can get a little subjective. So Subway is one. Uh, we struggled with this one a lot. Where does it really fall? And as we started to think about it, Subway, there they're typically at a lower price point. They're trying to compete with fast food. I yeah. And you see their advertisements out that that's who they're competing against. Their dining room is pretty basic, um, generally the plastic tables and chairs. So as we started to think about the characteristics of a subway, that's how we saw it landing, kind of shifted it more to that fast food. But there's no doubt it has aspects that could be considered fast casual. Yeah, it's the food's made to order, you know, Subway eat fresh. It's fresh ingredients typically, we assume. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it could kind of go either way, as Brian was saying, with as with some of these different restaurants. Uh, slipping into examples of fast casual, Culver's, Panera. So we got some examples there. And again, this is where we're trying to figure out as we looked at those categories, do they mostly fall in the in one definition to the other? So Culver's is another one, like Subway, that we had a lot of discussion about. So which which place does it fall in? They are ordering. You do order up front, but then they've got the runners. You typically go, you sit down, the food is brought out to you. The price point at a Culver's is generally a little bit higher. So. Um, that was another category that we looked at that said pushes it more into that fast casual. Yeah, there's typically a larger, nicer dining room, so they kind of want you to stay and eat in, um, which isn't often the case with fast food, which is kind of why it tips towards fast casual. But obviously with the drive-through, with kind of a lot of the other aspects of it, it could go, it could go either way. Uh, looking at a couple comments here too, time between order and delivery may be critical trip generation difference between types. I think that, that can definitely be a factor. If you look at fast food spots, they they are timed. Um, when they go through the drive through when you go up, they're trying to remember the exact time, but it's it's usually just a few minutes between your order and delivery that they're shooting for. That's not necessarily the case with a fast casual. Um, we go back to our Culver's example, you're ordering and then you're going to sit down. That food may be five to ten minutes before they come around and bring it out. So that, that can be a, a big difference to look at. Another comment we have, based on observations, does the type of cutlery and plates, such as reusable plates and silverware versus plastic, make a difference in defining the type? I didn't think about that one. But I think it can. I think that adds to the ambiance of it. And, yep. uh, is it is again, is it set up towards being fast, which would be to me more your throwaway, your plastic 
silverware as opposed to take your time, sit down, enjoy your meal, yeah. which would be the reusable stuff. So yeah, I, if you I, get metal cutlery, they don't yep. want you to take it to go. They right. want you to stay there <laughs> and eat. So I, I think that's definitely a factor um, to consider. Uh, last one in our examples, just uh, the high turnover sit-down yeah. restaurants. These ones are a little easier to spot, I think, because uh, you do, you sit down, a waiter comes, brings you a menu, um, you might have to wait for a seat, and uh, you pay after you eat. So definitely very different than the fast food, fast casual definition. Mm -hmm. Another comment, are our categories objective or subjective? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> We did our best to try to put some definition to the fast casual. Those were those things we talked about in terms of looking at uh, the price points, looking at the type of service and all that. But uh, we had a lot of discussion in-house as we looked at these categories and examples. And I, there is a case to be made of where certain ones fit. And it, it isn't a hard and fast rule. So I. Uh, we try to be as objective as we can, but in, in this in particular, it, it does become somewhat subjective. Yep. So uh, taking what we found, uh, we've collected some data at uh, all these different locations, um, collected our own trip generation data, and then we compared between the high, toner, high turnover, fast casual, and fast food. And you know, as we said, it is slightly subjective to what is fast casual and what's fast food. But we did, we think we made the right choice. We did what we th thought was right. And uh, comparing the daily trip gen um, between the three of them for square footage, you see that the high turnover is lower, fast casual is higher, and the fast food's even higher. It's almost linear uh, in the difference between the the three there. So there is a significant difference in trip generation between a fast food and a fast casual and even more, I guess, the high turnover. Mm -hmm. And then we took that also, just show these two. This is the AM and PM peak of the generator, so not necessarily the, the peak of the adjacent road, but uh, when we compare those, again, we're seeing significant differences between those, enough to say that fast casual can be its own category, and it does have lower trip generation than a fast food restaurant. So. Yeah, if you're building a fast food or a fast casual to the specs of a fast food for the parking lot or a drive through or whatever, you may be seriously overbuilding. Mm -hmm. And then if we go to our last one here, just popping on, those, these stars represent the ITE rates for the high turnover restaurant and the fast food restaurant, starting at the top with the daily and then the bottom two are your AM and PM peaks. So Kind of interesting, um, our daily numbers fell pretty close, so you know, our data is very regional, so this is yep. generally Minnesota, Wisconsin type data. Um, so it's, our data was a little bit higher than IT, but in the, in the ballpark. Uh, what was interesting, at least from our end, our high turnover matched up almost exactly, but if you look at our fast food compared to IT, the peak hour matched closer with uh, fast casual. Our fast food was uh, a good bit higher than the ITE numbers. All right, so coming back to the two questions, just how do you define fast casual? Again, we, we threw out five categories of what we kind of look at to try to be as objective as we can, realizing that Fast casual isn't going to hit every one, and you're going to have to make some choices as to which is which. And then the second one doesn't make a difference in terms of traffic generation. We would say, yes, it does. And having an extra category in there can make that difference in terms of parking, impact to adjacent intersections, all that. So uh, we would definitely think that as you go forward, as you're looking at restaurants, you should try to take into account and try to really figure out which category does this development land in. All right, so that's what we've got for our presentation. I'm going to mention we've got this free download 
Uh, this is all our trip generation data. We've updated it with our fast casual, ton of other land uses in there. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't put anything to it. We just provide you all the data so you can look at it yourself. You can see what we're showing for rates and that. So while I've got that up, we'll go back into some questions here. Uh, there we go. Captain D now serves plates with silverware, sends runners to the table with most meal prices over five. Um, I would look at that and say that could be a fast casual, but it seems to be sliding into that range. It's uh, particularly with the runners to the table, you're going to have that longer stay. It's going to take more time to deliver the food. I would definitely say that could be a, a fast casual. Yeah, you're more, more likely to sit down and eat there than take it to go. What about categorizing fast food as establishments with drive through on individual pad sites? So, yeah, and this kind of goes to another comment where fast casual is often found within uh, maybe a strip mall or another uh, layout center. like that in the shopping center. Whereas fast food is can be within that, um, is oftentimes standalone by itself with the drive-through. I could go either way on that one because uh, if we think about Culver's here, we had slid that into the fast casual. Those have drive-throughs. Those are on their own pad. Uh, McDonald's typically yep. in the same way on its own pad with a drive-through. So. Kind of on the other side of Subway is oftentimes in the shopping center, in a strip mall, sometimes even inside a gas station. Yeah. Um, and those can have drive throughs A lot of them don't. So I don't know. I don't necessarily think either of those characteristics would necessarily fall into one or the other. You could you could have a drive through You might not. You could have an individual site or be part of a mall. I, I think you need to look beyond those two characteristics into other things. Let's see, I had a comment from John that he's from Canada and loves scotch. Um, feel free to share. <laughs> Be happy to have some of that. How many data points did we have for each category? For the restaurant, there was high turnover sit down. There was, I think there were, in the fast food, there was 20 or so. Yeah. Fast that sounds right. Casual. Fast casual, we were five or six. Yeah. To a little bit fewer. Um, so, yeah, this isn't the hundreds of hundreds of data points. But um, for the sites that we gathered and put together, they were all falling closely within that range. So we weren't seeing a big spectrum between... Uh, right. If we looked specifically at fast food, it wasn't somewhere 100 and somewhere 1,000, and they averaged 500. They were all pretty close to what they saw, so we weren't seeing a big range. Let's see here. More comments. Sites didn't work for me from John. Um, I don't know what that's in reference to, so... Yeah, hopefully uh, I had another comment about simplifying it for a governmental process. Hopefully, I mean, that's the whole idea behind us gathering our own trip generation is we like to try to make it as specific as possible. And so I would say you could even take it a step further in your studies. If a Culver's or someone else is proposing a site and you can go out and measure the traffic at two or three other sites that are already there, you're going to be in a better bet than even trying to rely on, on this data. So that's something we always try to, uh, it's something we always try to let people know too, is uh, if you can gather your own data, what we try to do with our studies, that's always going to be better. Um, all right, we're almost at one o'clock clock here. Uh, we will stay on the line. We'll uh, keep answering questions. And um, same the site might be having some Yeah, questions. we'll we'll keep answering questions for as long as people have them. But thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, our next one is on the 25th where we're going to be talking about autonomous vehicles and 
changing trend, so we hope you'll join us in about a month. And in the meantime, I'll go back to this slide. Um, so real quick, the tripgeneration.org and the Bitly site are currently down due to things out of our control. So keep those bookmarked and uh, check back soon. We should be able to get Yeah, we'll try to get those up and running for everybody soon. Uh, feel free to email myself, email Nancy. We'll, we'll try to send that stuff out or we'll let people know when it's up and running. Um, all right, getting back to our questions. Slightly outside today's topics, places like uh, Starbucks and Caribou serving sandwiches, would it put them more in a fast food than a coffee shop? Um, because they have coffee and because, like uh, the comment notes, coffee has a ridiculously high trip generation, I don't know what they would fall into fast food. I think I would keep them in I don't know. with coffee. You can get coffee at McDonald's, right? But that's not what you people can. Are going but you're not going for. to McDonald's. Yeah. Typically, you're not going for coffee. Some it's, people it's probably all about do. The chicken nuggets, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, Starbucks, Caribou, those places. You're going there for coffee. You might get a sandwich or something as a supplement to it. So, yeah, I, so I think that's still what its, the majority. Yeah, it's getting. I think that's still in its own category. I uh, typically use peak hour of adjacent street rather than generator. This was um, this was just, we've got all of them when we list our trip generation. When we're doing our studies, it really depends on what we're looking at. Um, we've used both, I'd say, and we try to provide all that information. I just didn't want to put a ton of points on there. I just tried to make it clean by only having three points. So. Uh, yes, <laughs> we use uh, peak hour of adjacent street traffic too. We don't typically provide this presentation as I go on to the comments, but we will have a YouTube video of this, which we'll email out and let people know where that's at. So uh, if you want to forward this on, uh, watch it later, pick up the slides later, you can do it there. Next comment, when the trip generation available for fast casual? Uh, we've got it on our slide right now. Uh, we said the sites aren't working there, but if you go there and download those spreadsheets, we have that information in there. You can see it. I believe ITE is going to be making this a category in their version 10, but don't hold me to that. So um, from ITE standpoint, I think that's coming out soon. From our standpoint, as soon as we get our sites working, you can download that data and you can see it yourself. All right, still working through the comments here. Has any of the information we've collected been submitted to IT? Yes, we sent them thousands of hours of stuff. So um, we worked with them early on when they were looking at uh, their new manual, so this data should go into IT's stuff. Still looking through comments here. Uh, in our spreadsheet, we have fast casual, but it's not listed by name, only location. Uh, we have typically kept the data, the exact names off of all of our trip generation stuff. Um, and that is simply, I don't know where we fall into of some providing some of that. Stuff. Yeah, privacy stuff. Um, so at this point, I don't think we're willing to share the exact names, uh, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, a couple more comments here that the, the links aren't working. We apologize again for that. That's out of our control right now, but we will try to make sure we get those up and running quickly. All right, so there's another one. Glad to hear it was sent to IT. Yep, 
uh, we hope they incorporate it all and we uh, our goal is to uh, be thoughtful, share, help improve transportation. So that's why we're doing this. That's why we provided it to IT. So um, yeah, we're, we're happy about that too. We hope they incorporate as much as they can. So with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Any last words, Max? Nothing else from me. All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending. And Thank you. You said check back on those links. We'll get them up and running soon. And then also we hope you'll join us again in a month. Thanks again.